Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakwadash, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, by Hashem, meaning in the name of Yahweh Shai, being the name of Yahweh's only begotten Son and our Lord and Savior, also who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, by Hashem Rakakwadash, meaning in the name of the Holy Spirit. The bodies of the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and shall belong to the whole four legs, and scattered abroad to the four corners of the earth, which are you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. All right, those of you who see yourself on this chart, all right, you know, you are the t uh, children of Israel, all right, you know, the true children of Israel, you know, not those people over in the land of Israel right now claiming to be the children of Israel, all right. So lucky. It's windy outside, so this board blowing all over the place. But um, and shallow on to the hope to shadow on to the uh, speckled birds, and you Israelite pointers that scatter out in other nations that look like other nations, but are in fact Israelites, all right? So we out here in the highways and the byways, you know, once again, you know, to preach the kingdom, preach the gospel, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, all right, and also to prophesy the downfall of this wicked kingdom known as Babylon the Great, all right? You know, so lucky. let me see if I can set this up better. All right. So, you know, it's a lot going on on the earth right now. You know, it's clear to see that great judgment is getting ready to come upon this place, all right? You know, but people are walking around, you know, living their life as they did in the days of Noah, all right? You know, in the days of Noah, you know, they didn't want to listen to Noah. You know, he was a preacher of righteousness, as the scripture says. You know, so today, you know, because the scripture says there's nothing new under the sun, right? So everything that was going on back then in the days of Noah is happening right now. All right, you have brothers out here in the highways and the byways teaching the gospel, you know, warning the flock of what's to come, but yet nobody listens, all right, for the most part, you know? So it's the same thing that was going on back then in the days of Noah, all right? And then what happened? During the days of Noah, you know, the flood came and caught everybody off guard. So the same thing is gonna happen this time around, all right? You know, while brothers are teaching and preaching, trying to get you to repent, you know, it's gonna come a day when all hell is gonna break loose, you know, and great destruction is gonna come to this place, all right? So like, you know, I'm just laying this on the floor, you know? But, uh, yeah, you know, it's. Great destruction is going to catch the vast majority of people off guard, as it did in the days of Noah. All right, you know, all hell is going to break loose. The dollar is going to collapse, which we're seeing right now. All right, you know, and once the dollar collapses, all chaos is going to break out in the streets. You know, when that happens, you know, it's going to be too late for you, Jakes, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. All right, you know, it's going to be too late for you to repent. You know, and turn back to Yahweh by Shemuel All right, because you're not going to have men out here teaching anymore. You know, so that's why, you know, it's important to take this uh, thing serious and repent while you still have the chance, all right? You know, so I'm going to bring out, the first scripture I want to bring out is Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 14. And it says, Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead, and Christ and Yahweh shall, shall give thee light, all right? So this is the time that, you know, you're supposed to wake about, wake about to sleep. You know, while the majority of our people are asleep right now. They don't realize what the hell is going on out here in the streets. You know, great destruction is getting ready to come to this place, all right? It's gonna catch the vast majority of you Israelites, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians off guard, all right? It's gonna catch you off guard. It's gonna come as a thief in the night, as the scripture says, you know? Verse uh, 15, see then that you walk circumspect, not as fools, but as wise, all right? You know, and the vast majority of our people are walking around as fools, not being wise at all. You know, the majority of our people are walking around, you know, doing all types of abominations, all right? You know, living in the YOLO spirit. You know, you only live once, so just live it up, all right? You know, being damn whores, homosexuals, so on and so forth, whatever the case may be, adulterers, adulteresses, all right? You know, walking around just like thoughts, whatever the case may be, you know? That's it's not the wise thing to do right now. That's not the it's not wise to conduct yourself in that matter, all right? You know, because if you are, you're considered a fool. 
You know, you're gonna get caught off guard out here in these last days, all right? Great destruction is gonna come upon you at a time that you least expect it. Verse uh, 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil, all right? You know, and it's plain to see that these times that we are living in is evil. And it's going to keep waxing worse and worse until Yahweh Shah comes back, all right? You know, you got people out here trying to force the alphabet agenda on other people, all right? You know, you got our, got, our, uh, got the so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native American men out here, you know, killing each other, robbing each other, doing, some, doing all types of uh, wickedness, all right? You know, whatever the case may be. But the point is that you see that these days are evil. It's waxing worse and worse, you know? So that's how we know that we are in the end times, you know? So seeing that the days are evil, you know, it's a wise thing to, it's a, the best thing to do is walk circumspect, you know, not as fools, all right? Be wise, all right? You know, the wise thing to do right now is to repent, turn back to our true power, Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, and keep the law, statutes, commandments to the best of your ability, all right? But first and foremost, the faith, because that's what's going to deliver you out of these times to come, all right? So, uh, this is verse 17. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is, all right? You know? And it's the will of the Lord that this place gets destroyed. And if you don't repent, you know, you're going to be a partaker in that, all right? Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, is getting ready to be destroyed, you know, by thermonuclear missiles, all right? World War III. But even before that, great plagues are going to get, get is getting ready to come upon this place, all right? You know, the scripture says that the Lord is going to bring plagues upon Egypt as he did before. Let me see if I can get that. All right? I'm trying to get the scripture right quick. It talks about you know, the Lord bringing plagues upon Egypt as before, all right? And it's not talking about ancient Egypt because America is spiritual Egypt, you know, pursuing the revelation, or I believe chapter 18, if I'm not mistaken, you know? All right, so this is 2nd Edge chapter 15, and verse 10, and it says, Behold, my people is, are, is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. All right? Because Yahweh Bashim Yahushua is getting ready to deliver the elect out of, this, out of the land of Egypt, spiritual Egypt, which is America. All right? Verse 11. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before, and I will destroy all the land thereof. All right? So Yahweh Bashim Yahushua is getting ready to destroy, you know, Egypt, which is spiritual Egypt, you know? But he said he's getting ready to bring plagues upon Egypt as before, right? You know? And we clearly see that's what's going on right now. You know, this place, this place is getting hit up with things back to back to back, all right? You know, this economy is going on. You know, this economy is going. That's one of the plagues that this place is going to get hit with, all right? Famine is on the way, you know? Uh, great death and destruction is coming to this place, all right? But the majority of the people don't realize what's going on, all right? You know? Yahweh Bashi Yahushua is getting ready to bring plagues as before to the land of Egypt, all right? You know, and a lot of you Israelites, you so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, you're going to be destroyed if you don't repent, all right? So, uh, let's get back to it. Let's go back to, um, so like, that leads me to Mark chapter 13, all right? Because that's going into hell, and, and, and before Yahweh Shah comes back, you know, it's gonna be a time of great affliction, all right? You know, great affliction, you know, greater than any type of, anything that you went went through before, all right? You know? So like, let me see if I can stand this board up. You know, I don't wanna stand it up because it's gonna blow all over the place. But, um, all right, I'm gonna just sit it right there for the time being. But um, this is Mark chapter 13, and we're gonna start at verse 19, all right? And it says, for in those days shall be affliction such as was not 
from the beginning of the creation of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, Salaki. Let's read that again. For in those days shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of the creation which Yahweh Hashem Yahushai created unto this time, neither shall be. All right. So the times that we're coming into, you know, it's going to surpass anything that we've been through. All right. You know, it's going to surpass the transatlantic slave trade. You know, and various other. You know uh events that have taken place in history all right you know this is going to be a worst time in history you know these people don't make these apocalyptic movies for no reason all right you know these so-called so-called elites you know beginning with your rothschilds and your rockefellers so on and so forth they know exactly what's coming to this place all right you know as we already know i made plenty of lessons about this already you know esau edom which is indeed the so-called white man the devil in the bible right you know he wants to play god all right he wants to play you know, he wants to be, be in the position of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You know, and the scriptures tell us that, you know, before Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai tells us, you know, uh, before something happens, he tells us what's going to uh, happen. All right? You know, through the scriptures, you know? So it's the same way when he saw even the so-called white man, right? You know, he does the exact same thing. You know, he does it through his media, his movies, whatever the case may be. All right? You know, that's why you have movies like I Am Legend. You know, Book of Eli, all right? Because they know exactly what's coming to this place, all right? You know, great destruction is getting ready to come to this place, all right? And the vast majority of our people are just walking around like nothing's going on. This dollar is gonna collapse. Once the dollar collapses, all hell is gonna break loose in these streets, all right? You know, so that's why it's good to repent right now while you can, you know? But the majority of people just think the Bible is just a book of fairy tales, but it's cool though. You know, very soon they're gonna realize that this book Everything that was written in this book is going to come to pass, all right? So let's continue. This is Mark chapter 13, verse 20. And it says, And except that the Lord has shortened those days, no flesh should be saved before the elect Satan, whom he had chosen, he had shortened those days, all right? You know, so that's why right now, you know, it seems like days are flying by. Because Yahweh Bashim al Shai, you know, he's shortening the times, all right? You know, you'll go to work on Monday, the next thing you know, it's Friday, all right? You know, you get off Friday, next thing you know, it's Monday. You're going back to work because Yahweh Bashim al Shad is shortening the times, all right, for the elect's sake, you know? So seeing that, you know, it's time to repent, you know, turn away from your wickedness, all right? You know, nothing that this society has to offer is worth, you, you know, getting put to death for, all right? You know, but, but, uh, but see, majority of our people, they don't have vision. They don't realize that, you know, something greater is coming, you know. They don't realize that we have a kingdom that's coming, all right, that's going to stand forever. You know, the scriptures talk about how where there's no vision, the people perish, all right. Let me see if I can pull that. So it's Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18. And it says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keeps the law, he happy is he. Alright? But point being, where is no where there is no vision, the people perish. Alright? Our people can't see that this economy is getting ready to collapse. Alright? Our people can't see that, you know, all hell's getting ready to break loose. But ultimately, our people can't see that, you know, we have an everlasting kingdom that's coming to the Israelites, all right? So-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, they can't see that. You know, they think that America is the end-all, be-all, but Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is getting ready to humble you and show you that America ain't shit, all right? Point blank, period. You know, he's about to humble a lot of you Israelites, you know, because you're so proud. You know, you're proud because you got a little bit of money, but your money is going to get taken away from you, all right? It's quite apparent. That these uh, that these devils are getting ready to do away with this uh with this monetary system, all right? You know, and then they're going to implement a new system, which is the mo, which is uh, CBDCs, all right, central bank digital currencies. You know, and ultimately it's going to lead us right to the MOTB, because with central bank digital currencies, you know these uh, devils, you know these uh the elites of this world, they're able to monitor to monitor all your purchases. You know, they're going to have the ability to, you know, say what you can buy and can't buy, all right? You know, what does that sound like? Revelation chapter 13, 
you know, you can't buy or sell without the mark. So, you know, the CBDC is going to lead us right to the MOTP, you know? So that's why it's time to repent, man. You know, it's time to repent. You know, we are at the end of the lottery. A lot of you Israelites are gonna get slaughtered. It's gonna be a bloodbath out here, right? You know, it's gonna be a straight bloodbath. You know, that's why Yahweh Bashim al Shah said, you know, his bomb is gonna be, uh, you know, dipped in blood, you know? Let me see if I can pull that. So this is Revelation chapter 19. And let's start at verse 11. All right, and it says, And I saw heaven opened up, and behold, a white horse, and he sat upon him, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Alright, this is talking about Yahweh Shai. Alright? Clearly showing you that, you know, Yahweh Shai, he's not coming back to give, you know, hugs and kisses like the Christian church teaches, alright? You know, Yahweh Hashim al Shai is coming to bring war. Salaki. Alright? You know, Yahweh Hashim al Shai is coming to make war. To judge the people that's dwelling upon this earth, alright? Let's continue. Verse uh, 12. And it says, His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but himself. But he himself, verse 13. And he, he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name was called the Word of Yahweh, all right? You know? So his vesture, his clothing is going to be dipped in blood when, he's come, when he comes back. Why? Because he's getting ready to slaughter millions and billions of people, all right? You know, so Yahweh shot, he's not some white man with blue hair, uh, blind eyes. I mean, uh, blue eyes and blind hair, you know, he's, he's not that, all right? You know, that image that you see in the Christian church, that's a soft ass faggot, all right? You know, and uh, YouTube might take the video down for that, but if it is, if, it's, if so, it is what it is, all right? You know, Yahweh Shah is a so-called black man, austere black man, with woolly hair, he's coming to make war, all right? To destroy the wicked, you know, Esau, Edom, and these other nations, all right? You're only here in Babylon the Great, and also you two thirds, you know? So that's why it's time for you to repent if you don't want to be a part of that number, all right? So let's get back to it. I just want to bring that up, you know, because Yahweh Shah, he's coming to make war, all right? You know, he's not gonna come back on uh, friendly terms, all right? He's coming to redeem the elect, but the rest of you, uh, the rest of the people that's dwelling here in Babylon the Great, you know, you're gonna be destroyed. It's gonna be a whole bloodbath out here, man. All right, so that leads me to uh, Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 13, all right? And it says, he that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsake them shall have mercy, all right? So again, that's the importance of repenting right now, all right? You know, because the majority of our people, they like to cover their sins, like like Yahweh Shai you know, doesn't see it, all right? You know, our people think that they, can't, they, ain't, they ain't doing anything wrong. You know, they don't find anything wrong with being alphabet people. You know, these niggas out here, they don't see anything wrong with having sex with another man's wife or woman. You know, these women don't see nothing. They don't find nothing wrong with, you know, uh, laying down with a man other than her husband. All right? You know, these niggas out here, they don't see nothing wrong with, you know, gunning their brothers down the street. You know? So, look. You know, if you hide your sins, you're not going to prosper. You're going to be destroyed many times to come, all right? So this is the time to confess your sins to your Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai and repent. And in that day when all hell break loose, you know, you're going to find mercy, all right? You're going to find mercy in that day, all right? You know? So that brings me to uh, Lamentations, chapter 3 and verse 22, all right? Because Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, you know, he's just not one, he's not just a one-sided being, all right? You know, yes, he's a man of war, and he's going to destroy a lot of you people. But, you know, he is merciful, all right? You know, he is, he's merciful. You know, so that's why it's, you know, important to repent. So you can't have that mercy that he's bestowing, all right? You know, but very soon, that door of mercy is getting ready to be closed, you know? So let's 
So um, this is uh, Lamentations chapter three and verse 22. And it says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not, all right? So it's the Lord's mercy that we woke up today, all right? You know, it's the Lord's mercy that, you know, uh, we are not consumed, you know, because how about Shinnah Shai, you know, in the wilderness, when we was being rebellious and whatnot, murmuring, not having faith, you know, how about Shinnah Shai, he got to the point where, you know, he just wanted to do, do away with the whole nation of Israel, you know? But Moses, you know, and whatnot, you know, I believe it was Aaron as well, you know, they, uh, Pretty much, they asked you how about Shemel Shai to, you know, have mercy, don't do away, you know, with uh, with the nation of Israel. Then he had mercy, all right? You know? So, again, it's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because he could do away with every single one of us with the snap of a finger. You know what I'm saying? You know, he could cause you to drop dead right now. All right? He could cause, you, he could cause a flying bullet to fly all the way across the street and nail you. And the bullet, you know... You know, that's how y'all buy y'all shot works. You know what I'm saying? You know, so you don't want to play. Right, I'm going to wait for this to go by. All right, so lock, y'all was waiting for that uh, fire truck to go by so you could hear me. But, you know, back to what I was saying, you know, y'all buy shot, you know, he's merciful. It's the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed, all right? You know, it's the other Lord's mercy that we woke up today. He didn't have to wake us up, you know? So don't take this time of mercy and grace as a, don't take it for granted. You know what I'm saying? Because very soon, you know, those doors of mercy is gonna be closed. You know, especially when all hell break loose. You know, when family of the word is in full effect, all right? Verse uh, 23, they are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness, all right? So, Salaki, let's read that again. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, all right? So Yahweh Shem Yahushua's mercy is new every morning, you know? So he's very merciful. And a lot of you Israelites are taking that for granted, you know? So that's why it's important, you know, to repent. You know, turn away from your wickedness, all right? You know, Yahweh Shem Yahushua, he's having mercy on you. You know, but very soon, you know, he's going to say, you know what, enough is enough, all right? You know, the scriptures talk about how, you know, Yahweh Shem Yahushua, you know, he, had, he has held his peace, you know? I'm gonna get that in just a second. So uh, let's get Ecclesiastes chapter five, all right? You know, because a lot of you Israelites, you know, including a lot of you that's in the truth, you know, you take the Lord's mercy for granted. You know, you say that, oh, he's merciful, he's gonna forgive me. Let me just eat this uh, piece of shrimp right quick. You know, I'll repent later, all right? Or let me eat this pork, uh, uh, let me eat this piece of pork, you know, then I'll repent le next week, all right? You know, you can't do that. You know, you can pick, you, the Lord is so, you know, the Lord is so strategic to the point where, you know, he could cause you to choke off that piece of pork that you want to cleave on to, all right, and die. <laughs> you know, now how about Shimei Oshai, Salaki? You know, now how about Shimei Oshai, he could cause you to choke off that piece of shrimp that you know that you should not be eating, and then you could die, all right? So you know, it's not a good idea to play with y'all about Shimei all right? It's not a good idea to do that. You know, because y'all about Shimei all can take you off the earth. You know, he could delete you just like that, all right? So uh, let me continue. This is uh, Ecclesiastes chapter five and verse six. And it says, and say not his mercy is great, he will be pacified for the multitude of my sins, for mercy and wrath come from him, and his indignation rested upon sinners, all right? So it says, say not his mercy is great, and he will be pacified for the multitude of my sins. And then it goes on to say, so like, you just bore blowing all over. All right? All right, Salaki. You know, it's a real windy day out here, man. You know, but still the word, the word is still gonna come out, regardless, all right? You know, this word, you how about Shemel Shah is still gonna come out regardless, no matter what, all right? 
So I'm gonna lay, I'm just lay this down on the, on the ground. Lord willing, whoever walked by can still see it. All right? You know? So uh, I believe I was at Ecclesiastes uh, chapter, yeah, chapter six. All right, let's just read that again. And it says, but it's of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion fell not. All right? No, it's a lot, it's the wrong verse. All right, Ecclesiastes chapter five and verse six, all right? And it says, and say not his mercy is great, he will be pacified for the multitude of my sins, for mercy and wrath come from him, and his indignation rests upon sinners forever, all right? So that's why it's important. Huh? Yeah. Hebrews what? Yeah, you familiar with him? Yeah, for sure, for sure. All right. All right, appreciate it, man. So, uh, yeah, you know, it says, uh, for wrath and mercy, you know, come from your how about shot, all right? You know, so that's why it's not a wise thing to uh, play with Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, right? You know, because he's having mercy upon us right now, but he could turn that mercy and make it turn it, he could take that mercy and turn it into wrath, just like that, all right? You know, so don't put it off from day to day to repent, you know, because who said you had an opportunity to repent tomorrow? You know, you may, you may not, all right? So take the opportunity while you still can. Let's continue. Ecclesiastes chapter five and verse seven. And it says, make no tarry to turn to the Lord, but put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in his security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance, all right? So don't put, put off from day to day. Oh, I'll repent tomorrow. You know, let me eat this piece of shrimp. The Lord ain't gonna do nothing. You know, you know, he'll have mercy on me. The Lord knows my heart, but it's good to say the heart is deceitful in all things. All right? So stop taking the Lord's the mercy for granted, man. Let me see if I can get that. Because that's what a lot of you Israelites like to say. You know, the Lord knows my heart. I have a personal relationship with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right? You know, and they don't say Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. They say Jesus Christ. All right? I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. No, hell no. All right? That's not an excuse. Let's read that right quick. All right, this is Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9, all right? And it says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it, all right? So the heart is not talking about the, the organ that's beating in your chest, you know? The heart is your mind, all right? It says your heart is desper desperately wicked above all things. Who can know it, all right? So to say that, you know, all oh, the Lord knows my heart that's going off. You know, that's just an excuse to continue in your sin. All right? Let me see. It's a precept to go along with that. Let me see if I can pull it. All right, so this is Ecclesiastes chapter 32. In verse 17, all right? It says, a sinful man will not be reproved, but findeth an excuse according to his will, all right? So a wicked man, you know, when you approve him, when you tell him, hey, you should not be doing that. Don't be eating that piece of shrimp. Don't be eating that piece of pork, all right? Stop lying to your hero, you know what I'm saying? Hey, stop lying with, with another man's wife, all right? You know, stop being a whore, so on and so forth, you know? Stop uh, being a, a adulterer or adulteress, all right? You know, Yahweh Bashim al you know, well, Salaki, the scripture says a simple man will not be reproved, but findeth an excuse uh, to, uh, to, uh, according to his will. All right? So that's exactly what you're doing when you make excuses like, oh, the Lord knows my heart. All right? You know, that's just an excuse to continue in your sin. You know? And you're going to be destroyed for that very soon if you don't repent. All right? So, um, let's go back. So now that brings me to, uh, Isaiah chapter 42, all right? You know, because very soon, you know, Yahweh Hashim Yahushai, he gonna say enough is enough, all right? Those doors of mercy that was, that's open right now, 
they're gonna be closed. All right, they're gonna be closed. You know what I'm saying? Look, man, look, bro. You got people over here, damn, making TikToks. You know, I don't know if you can see it. You know, this is what people are doing right now. All the hell, all hell's getting ready to break loose. You know, and this is what our people are concerned with. You know, making TikToks. All right, you know, making damn TikToks, man. You know, it's ridiculous. You know, but whatever it is, what it is. You know. But this is Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 14. And it says, I have long time holding my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a, tra a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. All right. So Yahweh Shemel Shah said, I have long time holding my peace. All right. Meaning he has had mercy on you. Israelites for a long time, all right? He has sat back and watched, you know, commit all types of abominations, all types of sin, all right? You know, he is holding his peace. You know what I'm saying? You know, but very soon, he's going to say enough is enough, as we just read. Let's read it again, all right? Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 14. And it says, I have long time holding my peace. I have been still. I have refrained myself. Refrain yourself from what? Destroying you Israelites, all right? Having mercy, he's having mercy on you. But this is what's gonna happen very soon. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once, all right? You know? So, Yahweh Shem Shai has watched you Israelites do all type of wickedness for years and years, centuries, all right? And has had great mercy upon you, all right? You know, but we in a time when Yahweh Bashi Yahweh Shah is going to say, hey, enough is enough. You know, it's time for you to get judged, all right? You know, it's time for you to get judged. You know, you made your bed, and damn it, you got to lay in it, all right? You know, so that's why it's important to repent. Because the scriptures also talk about how, you know, the, the plagues are going to come upon this place like a woman, you know, uh, you know, in her, in her ninth month, all right? Let me see if I can get that. So the second Edris chapter 16, Salaki. So the second Edris chapter 16 and verse 37, all right? Let's start at verse 37. And it says, Behold, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack. All right, we see that. You know, this, the plagues are not slack. They're coming back to back, all right? You know, this place is about to crash, the economy is gonna collapse, about to crash, you know, and the dollar is gonna collapse, all right? That's one of the plays that's hitting, hitting America up, you know? And many more places getting ready to hit this place, all right? You haven't seen nothing yet. Let's continue. As, a, as when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth her son, bringeth forth her son with two or three hours of her, of her birth, great pains come past her womb. Which pains when a ch when the child cometh forth, they slack not a moment. Verse thirty nine. Even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth, and the world shall mourn and sorrow shall come upon it on every side. All right, you know. So the plagues are gonna come to this place, you know, as a, a woman in her ninth month getting ready to deliver. All right, you know. So you know, and all this stuff, all the places getting ready to come here. You know, it's coming from Yahweh Bashim Shai. You know, which is why he said, you know, he has long time holding his peace, but now he's gonna cry like a woman in travail. All right? You know, great plagues are getting ready to come to this place, all right? You know, Yahweh Bashim Shai is getting ready to bring great judgment, you know? So like you. All right. So let's go to uh Micah chapter 3 and let's read verse 4 alright 
and it says, Then shall they cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. He will even hide his face from them at that time, as they have behaved themselves ill in their doings, all right? You know, how about you out shots get ready to close those doors of mercy, all right? You know, you know, when you get ready to cry to you, how about Shimmy Shai? You know, you didn't want to hearken unto the word, you didn't want to listen to the men that's out here week in and week out teaching the word. You know, how about Shimmy Shai? He's not gonna listen to you. Alright, he's not gonna hear your cries. Alright? Let's read that again. Micah chapter 3 and verse 4. Then shall they cry, then shall they cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. He will even hide his face from them at that time, all right? As they have behaved themselves ill in their doings, all right? So you Israelites is walking around the earth, you know, doing all types of wickedness. After you've been reproved and rebuked over and over again to stop doing what you're doing, hey, the Lord is not gonna hear you in that day. You know, when all hell break loose, you're gonna think about the men out here on the highways and the byways teaching. You're gonna think about the men that was on YouTube teaching, all right? You know, then you're gonna think about the names. Yahweh about Shimei Al Shai, you're gonna try to cry unto him. But the Lord is not going to hear you, all right? You know, you didn't want to take the chance to repent, you know, why you could, you know? The scriptures, I believe, in 2nd Ezra chapter 9, you know, I bring this out pretty often. You know, it talks about how when they get in liberty, they didn't take the chance to repent. Let me see if I can get that. Let's start at verse 8. And it says, No, let's start at verse 7. And it says, And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed. All right? So that's how you're going to be delivered from the times to come. All right? You know, by your faith and by your works. You cannot have one without the other. All right? Let's continue. Verse 8 shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders for I have sanctified them from the beginning all right you know so you know if you got a faith in the works you know you're going to be preserved from the saved perils all right you are, you're going to be pres preserved and saved from you know the times that we're coming into Jacob's trouble all right you know but those that don't you're going to dwell in torments let's continue then shall they be in pitiful case which now have abused my ways, and then and they have not cast so I can they that cast, have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. All right, you know. So if you just you know put off keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh by Shimon Shai, you know you didn't do His will. All right, you're gonna dwell in torments in these days to come. All right. Verse 11, and it says, and they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty. And had and went and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them and understood not but despised it. Verse 12, the same must know it after death by pain, all right? So, you know, you're gonna dwell in torments. You're gonna die in the most painful way, all right? You know, if you don't if you uh you know don't don't take the chance to repent, you know, while you still have it, all right? You know. But even so, you know. Jake ain't gonna get it until when they until they see all hell breaking loose, all right? You know, that's why the scripture says, you know, the Lord is only coming back for the elect. You know, only 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 the elect is gonna be redeemed, all right? You know, there's gonna be majority of the people, majority of you Israelites are gonna perish than those that's gonna be saved, all right? You know. So uh let's go to Zechariah chapter 7. And this is going to go into how, you know, the Lord, you know, he's going to, he's not going to hear you when all hell breaking loose, all right? You know, if you don't, you know, uh, repent, if you don't uh, keep the law, statutes, commandments to the best of your ability, all right? So this is Zechariah chapter 7 and verse 7. And it says, should ye not hear the words which the Lord hath cried by the former prophets? When Jerusalem was inhabited and, and in prosperity, and the cities thereof round about, 
when men inhabit the sound, inhabit the south and the paint and the plane. Verse 8, and the and the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment and show mercy and compassion every man to his brother, alright? You know, and by you know, brothers, you know, out here teaching his word. You know, great mercies are being showed to you, Israelites, all right? You know, ultimately it's being showed from Yahweh Shem Shai. You know, because we are the Lord's mouthpiece, all right? You know, and he's showing great mercy by giving you an opportunity, you know, to hear this word. You know what I'm saying? But very soon, as I've been stating, you know, this, this, this truth, you know, you're not going to be able to have access to it very soon, all right? You know, let's continue. Verse uh, 10. And oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor. And let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. Verse 11. But they refused to hearken and pulled away their shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear. All right. And that's exactly what you Israelites are doing. You know, you're stopping up your ears. You don't want to hear the word. All right. Majority of the people when they walk by and see a brother teaching, they just walk straight ahead like that brother's invisible. They don't even inquire, right? For the most part. You know, but here and there you do have, you know, brothers, you know, that uh and brothers and sisters that walk by and inquire, you know, but that's very rare because the majority of people they don't want to hear the word. You know, that's why the majority of people that's on the planet Earth right now, here in Babylon the Great, they're gonna perish. You know, they're gonna be destroyed any times to come, all right? Verse uh, nine. No, verse uh, Salaki. Verse 11. But they refused to hearken. No, Salaki, I already read that. All right, verse 12. And it says, Yeah, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts had sent in his spirit by, by the former prophets. All right? You know, so that lets you know the Lord speaks through men. All right? The Lord has men that he has set up to teach this word, all right? He had it back then, and guess what? He has it now, you know? For the majority of you Israelites, you know, you look at us like we're crazy, you know, you know, you mock, you laugh, so on and so forth. But very soon you're gonna realize that, you know, a prophet was among you, as Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 33 says, all right? It's gonna come a time when you're gonna wish that you had just took a little bit of time out of your day, you know, to listen, all right? You know? But then it's gonna be too late. Yahweh by Shemiah Shah is going to destroy your ass, all right? Verse 12. Uh, Salaki. Let's read that again, verse 12. Yeah, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts had sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Now, verse 13, you know, is the point, all right? And it says, therefore, it is come to pass that as he cried, and they would not hear, so they so they cried, and I would not hear, said the Lord of hosts. All right? So Yahweh Bashim Shai, you know, he's crying out, telling you to repent through his men that he has set up on the planet Earth to teach him and uh, teach the gospel of the kingdom. All right? You know, but a lot of you Israelites are not listening, you know? So when all hell break loose, you know, and you're gonna to start to cry out to the Lord, he's not gonna hear you. In fact, he's gonna laugh at your calamities. Let me see, I think that's in Proverbs chapter 28. No, it's Proverbs chapter one. And um, let me see if I can get it. Proverbs chapter 1 and let's start at verse 23 and it says turn you at my reproof behold I will pour out my spirit unto you I will make my words make known my words unto you all right and that's what's going on on earth that's why you have a lot of you know Israelites waking up you know knowing about this truth all right you know you saw the brother that just walked past you know he heard about the Hebrew Israelites all right you know so you how about Shemiah Shah is pouring out his spirit his word you know, that's why you have so many people, you know, recognizing the Israelites on the street. They'd heard this word before. You know, this word is getting preached. 
you know? Verse um, 27, when you're, no, Salaki, verse 24, because I have called and you refuse, I have stretched out my hand and no man recorded. Verse 25, but ye have set at naught in all my counsel and with none of my reproof. Right. Verse uh, 26 And it says I also will laugh At your calamity And I will mock when your fear cometh Verse 27 When your fear cometh as desolation And your destruction cometh as a whirlwind When distress and anguish Cometh upon you All right. So if you don't want to take correction You don't want to repent you know why you still have a chance, you know, when your calamity comes, you know, when all hell break loose, you know, the Lord is going to laugh at your calamity, all right? You know, why are you screaming out to the Lord, trying to repent, you know, or screaming out to the Lord, asking to be saved, he's going to laugh at you. Why? Because you didn't take the chance to repent while you still could, all right? You know, those doors of mercy is getting ready to close. You know, the same thing that was going on back in the days of Noah, you know, when it started to rain, I'm pretty sure people tried to get on that ark, but it was too late. You know what I'm saying? So the same thing is going to happen this time around. All right? So uh, let's go back. Now let's get uh, Habakkuk chapter uh, 2. All right? And this is really this is really going to describe what you're seeing right now in this society. All right? Now I want to get Habakkuk chapter 2. I want to get that in the NLT, you know, for the most part, you know, we read from the KJV, but sometimes you got to cross compare, you know, because sometimes other versions, you know, it's more uh, plain to understand. All right. So I want to get Habakkuk chapter two and the NLT right quick. So this is Habakkuk chapter 2 And um, let's start at verse Let's start at verse 1 all right? And it says I will climb up to my watchtower And stand at my bar post There I will wait to see What the Lord says Now he will answer And my, answer my complaint Alright You know And you know that's what we're doing You know And, uh, and the KJV it says, um, in the KJV, it says, I will stand upon my watch and set upon the tower. I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what shall I answer when I'm, when I'm reproved. All right? You know, and that's what, men, that's what us men are doing. You know, we're standing upon our watch. You know, we're watching what's going on. You know what I'm saying? So on and so forth. All right? You know, but let's get back to it. Verse 2. And it says, Then the Lord said, unto, said to me, Write my answer plainly upon tablets so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. All right. You know, so when we, you know, when brothers receive this word, you know, you know, when we receive this word, we're supposed to carry it to others and warn them about what's going on. All right. Or what's going to happen. Verse three. And it says this vision is for a future time. It describes the end and it will be fulfilled. It seems slow in coming. Wait patiently, for it will surely take place. It will not be delayed, all right? You know, because a lot of our people, you know, they think that, you know, these prophecies are not gonna be fulfilled. They think that, you know, the end of this society is never gonna come, all right? They think that World War III is never gonna pop off, all right? Because, you know, brothers have been preaching this for, you know, years and years, you know? You know, starting with the elders and apostles, you know, they've been out here teaching for decades, man. You know, so you have a lot of people out here, you know, saying, hey, I've been saying this forever. You know, it ain't never gonna come. You know, but the scriptures that say, you know, the vision is for a future time. It describes the end. It will be fulfilled. But it say, if it seems slow in coming, wait patient, for it will surely take place and it will not be delayed, all right? So every single prophecy, you know, it has a specific time that it has to, has to be fulfilled, you know? 
It may seem like it's, it's coming slow, but you gotta wait because it's slow, it's gonna come very soon, you know? And right now, it's clear to see that these prophecies, you know, it's not, it's not being delayed, you know, anymore, all right? These prophecies are speeding up. You know, every time you turn on the news, every time you go on social media, there's something going on, all right? You know, wars and rumors of wars, you know, earthquakes, pestilences, you know, somebody done dropped dead, whatever the case may be, all right? You know, so let's continue. Verse four, look at the proud, they trust in themselves and their lives are crooked, but the righteous will live by their faithfulness to Yahweh Bashim Al Shai, all right? So it says, look at the proud, they trust in themselves and their lives are crooked, all right? You know, these elites of this world, you know, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers all the way on down, you know, they trust in themselves and their lives are crooked, all right? You know, they trust in the society, you know, they trust in the dollar, they think that it's never gonna collapse, all right? You know, but very soon they're gonna be humble, greatly humble, you know? So lucky. I wanna add this board up, you know, I hate having to lay it on the ground, you know, because people that's driving by, they can't really see it. You know, so I like to have it up, you know, but it's hella windy today, so it's gonna blow down, you know, so, you know, we gotta do the best we can, so, it's a lot. But, uh, verse five, it say, wealth is treacherous and the arrogant are never at rest, all right? So wealth is treacherous and the arrogant is never at rest. You know, Esau Edom, he's never at rest. He always wants to more and more and more, you know? He wants to take and take and take. You know, but it's gonna be the downfall of them. You know what I'm saying? Let's continue. They open their mouth as wide as the grave, and like death, they are never satisfied. Esau Edom is never satisfied. That's why he has a track record of taking lands, taking people, whatever the case may be, all right? They're never satisfied, you know? Let's continue. All right. And it says, uh, in their greed, they have gathered up many nations and swallowed many people, all right? You know, and he's, he saw Edom, so-called white man, he's known for stealing uh, whole nations of people, all right? You know, us Israelites, you know, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, all right? You know, this is what Esau Edom is notorious for, you know? Verse six, but soon their captives will taunt them, all right? Very soon, and you're saying that right now, you know, us Israelites, you know, those that send us truth, you know, brothers, you know, we send a downfall of this place, all right? And we're taunting these devils. Look at your kingdom, Father, man. You thought this place was gonna last forever, did you? Now your dollar's collapsing, all right? You know, this place is gonna look like a straight wasteland, man. You know, so we're taunting, you know, these uh, devils, you know, these Rothschilds, these Rockefellers, because, you know, their kingdom is falling right before their eyes, all right? Let's continue. But soon their captors will taunt them, they will mock them saying, what sorrow awaits you thieves? Now you will get what you deserve. You become rich by extortion. But how much longer can this go on, all right? You know, and it's not gonna go on for much longer, all right? These devils have become rich from extortion, all right? From many, you know, uh, from rape, robbing, and murder, you know, stealing, you know, uh, you know, just put it plain and simple. The only reason why these devils are really rich is because of us, you know? They benefited off of us. You know, if it wasn't for us, this whole place, you know, wouldn't be around, right? You know, this place is built up off the blood shit, the blood, sweat, and tears of the Israelites, all right? You know? So this describes, you know, Esau Edom to a T, all right? Let's continue. Verse 7. Suddenly your debtors will take action that will turn on you and will and take all you have while you stand trembling and helpless, all right? Verse nine, what sorrow awaits you who build big houses with money gained dishonestly, all right? And what is Esau doing? He's dwelling in these big mansions, you know, these castles, these palaces and whatnot, whatever the case may be. They have whole islands to themselves, all right? You know, and it's because they gain money dishonestly, all right? You know, these people have stolen people, all right? You know, and have benefited off of it, you know? And they have a, the list goes on. They have done numerous things that are wicked to gain money, all right? And it's gonna come right back and bite them in the ass, all right? Because as we see right now, their economy is collapsing right before our eyes. Let's continue. 
You believe your wealth will buy you security, putting your family's nest beyond reach of danger. All right, you know this 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 applies to Esau Edom as a T to a T, man. You know he thinks that he, he could buy his way out of everything. You know he, he thinks that his money is going to save him. All right, and unfortunately, a lot of you Israelites think the same. Oh, I got 401k. You know I got a good job. I'm a lawyer. Whatever the hell the case may be, you know, for you dumb broads, you uh, Israelite women, you know, and I'm not talking about you sisters, that's, you sincere sisters, that's in the truth. I'm talking about you women that's out in the world. You know, you have only fans and whatnot. You know, you think you got something because you gained a bag from it. Hey, that's gonna be stripped from you too. All right. You know, great humble is getting ready to come to this place. All right. You know, a lot of you Israelites think that money is gonna save you out of every situation. But what the hell are you gonna do? when this economy collapse, all right? What are you gonna do when the dollar isn't worth anything anymore, all right? The only thing that's keeping this dollar alive right now is oil, all right? And the Saudi Arabians have been looking for different, uh, different, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, uh, different ways to trade, you know? So once the dollar is not backed by oil anymore, then that's it, you know? And so it's clear to see that this place is gonna collapse, man, you know? But the typical Jake, they don't realize it. You know, you had two E's over here making damn TikToks. You know, you got people out here, you know, smoking, you know, doing whatever the hell they want. They don't know what the hell is going on, man. You know, but it is what it is. You know, everything is spiritual. You know, the Lord has everybody in the lot that they need to be in, man. So let's continue. Verse 10, but by the murders you committed, you have shamed your name and, forfeit, and forfeited your lives. Verse 11, the very stones in the walls cry out against you, and the beams and the ceilings echo the complaint. Verse, um, verse 12, what souls await you who build cities with money gained through murder and corruption, all right? This whole Babylon the Great has been built off of that, you know, off the blood, sweat, and tears of the Israelites, all right? You know, let's read that again. What souls await you who build cities with money gained through murder and corruption, all right? You know, that's why I wanted to read this in the NLT, you know, because, you know, it makes it more clear, you know, of, you know, it describes this uh, society to a T, all right? Sometimes you gotta cross compare different versions, all right? Because some, some versions are more clear to understand than others, all right? Verse 13, has not the Lord of heavens armies for promise that the wealth of nations will turn to ashes they work so hard but all in vain man you know the scriptures are very true you know how in the world can you think this bible is a book of fairy tales you know it just describes what's going on in the earth right now it says let's read that again man it says has not the lord of heaven's armies promised that the wealth of nations will turn to ashes. They work so hard, but all in vain, all right? You know, so the wealth, you know, the wealth that these people think they got, you know, these billionaires, these millionaires, you know, you athletes, you rappers, you damn rich slaves, that's what I call you, because you ain't nothing but a rich slave, all right? You know, you may have a little bag here and there, but guess what, you still serving our enemy, Esau Edom, all right? So you're a rich slave, you know? But point being, it says the wealth of the nation will turn to ashes meaning it's not gonna be worth anything. Then it goes on to say, they work so hard, but all in vain. You know, you Israelites are working your ass off, you know, overtime to secure a bag, but you don't dedicate no time to your how about shot, all right? You know, it's all in vain because very soon, this dollar is gonna collapse, this society is gonna collapse, then you're gonna be standing around looking dumb as hell because you didn't dedicate no time to the Lord, all right? Then you're gonna be destroyed, all right? You know, you're gonna be walking around the earth with a guilty conscience, all right? You know, and them times that we're coming into, you cannot have a guilty conscience. You know, you gotta have faith that you're gonna be delivered. You know, but a lot of you Israelites, you're not gonna be able to have that faith because you know deep down inside that you didn't do what you were supposed to do, all right? So, hey, the times that we end is crucial, all right? It's crucial. You don't have that much more time to repent, you know? So, uh, let's go back to Lucky. All right, let's go back to where I was. Um, 
Let's go to Zephaniah chapter 1. We're going to start at verse 14 and read on down. All right. And it says, the great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasted greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. All right. So the day of the Lord, you know, is hasted greatly. All right. You know, that's why you see things happening back to back. You know, that's why you see prophecies being um, being fulfilled every day. You know, so on and so forth. You know, then it goes on to say that mighty man shall cry there bitterly. All right. So these niggas just walking around acting like they tough, you know, so on and so forth. You know, these hood niggas, you know, so on and so forth. These rap niggas, so on and so forth. You know, they're, they're going to be crying in these days, all right? You know, you Israelites that look up to these men, you know, you're going to see them for who they truly is because they're going to be crying. They ain't going to be that big tough guy that they portrayed themselves to be, all right? You know, everybody's going to get exposed for who they really are in these times to come, all right? It's a lot Verse uh, 15, that day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and des desolation, a day of darkness and, uh, and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, all right? You know, so the day of the Lord is not going to be a uh, light, you know what I'm saying? You know, people think that the day of the Lord, when y'all shot comes back, you know, he's going to come back with hugs and kisses. But as we read earlier, you know, Yahweh Shah's garment is going to be dipped in blood, all right? And he's a man of war. He's coming to bring war, you know? So the day of the Lord, you know, it's going to be dark. It's going to be gloomy. But even before Yahweh Shah comes back, it's going to be dark and gloomy because it's going to be very apocalyptic out here. You know, it's going to be like a, be like I Am Legend, you know, The Walking Dead, you know, The Last of Us, you know, uh, uh, whatever the case may be, you know, it's plenty of apocalyptic movies out there. You know, but it's, that's exactly how it's going to be, you know, and when you watch those movies, do it look like a happy time out there? You know, no, it doesn't. It looks dark. It looks gloomy. So the same things that you see in this movie in movies is coming here to Babylon the Great, but it's going to be 10 times worse than what you've ever seen before. Right. You know, verse 16, a day of the trumpet. So lucky. The, the wind not blowing right now. So I want to put this up. Uh, board up so whoever uh, comes by whoever drives by can see it you know so this is uh Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 17 no 16 and it says a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers verse 17 I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as dung, all right? So again, it's gonna be a whole blood bath out here, all right? People's bodies are gonna be cast out in the street as dung. You know, you're gonna walk around the street, you're gonna walk around the corner, but like, oh damn, a dead body, all right? That's how much death is getting ready to come in this place, all right? For the majority of you Jakes, you, you, know, you, think, you think that this kingdom is the end all be all. You know, you think everything is good, but all right, keep having that mindset. You're going to see very soon. You know what I'm saying? Verse 18. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them. It's a lot. All right. Let's read that again. Verse 18. Matter of fact, let me just hold it up. You know if I can. All right, so this is uh, verse 18, and it says, Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath, but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. For he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land, all right? So the Lord is gonna give, uh, gonna make a riddance in this land of Babylon the Great, aka America, right? You know, it's gonna be a bloodbath out here. You know what I'm saying? And point being, the point that I want to bring out in this verse, you know, it says, neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. All right? You know, we see that this dollar is collapsing. Letting you know that, hey, the dollar ain't gonna be able to save you when all hell breaks loose. All right? You know, when the, when the dollar collapses, you're going to see people for who they truly are. 
all right? People gonna be out here taking what you got, you know, taking what they can get, you know, breaking the houses, you know, going into these stores, breaking in, taking whatever, so on and so forth, all right? You know, I don't know if you've seen a movie called World War Z, you know, but when the zombie outbreak bro broke loose, you know, it was a scene when, you know, people was running the stores trying to get what they could, you know, so on and so forth. That's how it's gonna be out here, all right? You know, when all hell break loose and people find out the dollars collapsed and it's never gonna be revived, hey, they're gonna be out here in the streets like that. You know, they're gonna be breaking in these stores, your Walmarts, your Walgreens, your Snooks, these restaurants, you know, whatever the case may be, to find goods that may be able to sustain them for a period of time because all hell's getting ready to break loose, you know? So, hey, man, these are times that we in. You know, so take heed while you still got a chance to, man. You know, so now let's, uh, I want to get 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 6. And it says, uh, Salaki. All right, yeah, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 6. And it's saying, Seeing it is a righteous thing with the Ahabash Yahweh Shah to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you, all right? You know, and that's why you see that's why you see Esau Edom's society collapsing, all right? You know, because of all the wickedness that he has done. You know, specifically to the Israelites, you know. So Yahweh Yahweh Shai, you know, he's been a, a recompense tribulation to them, you know. Verse 7. And to you who are troubled, uh, rest with us. With the Lord, Yahweh shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Verse 8, and flame fire taking vengeance on them. So like, and flame and fire taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh Shashiah shine and obey not the gospel of our Lord, Yahweh Shashiah. All right? So showing you that, hey, if you don't obey this gospel, if you don't take heed, you know, when Yahushua comes back with the angels, the chariots, you know, you're going to be burnt up, you know, and you're going to be burnt up by the term of nuclear missiles, all right? You know, it says, take it, let's read that again. And it says, who, and it says, and flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh Hashem Yahushua, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord, Yahushua Mashiach, all right? So it's important to take heed because you're going to be destroyed otherwise, all right? Let's continue. Verse 9. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, all right? That's what Yahweh is coming to do when he comes back. He's not coming back, you know, being friendly, all right? He's angry because of all the wickedness that has been done here in Babylon the Great and the world in general. You know, all hell's gonna be breaking loose all over the earth. But the main place that's gonna receive judgment is Babylon the Great, aka America, all right? Um, let me see, is that all I want to get with that? Yeah, I believe that was that on that. You know, so Yahweh Shai, this is what he's coming to do. You know, before he but before he comes back, hey, great players to come to this place, all right? All hell's gonna break loose, you know. And then after that, Yahweh Shah is going to come back and bring judgment too, you know? So judgment, great judgment is coming, whatever, whichever way that you want to look at it, you know? So, I want to get Malachi chapter 4 and verse 1, Salaki. All right? Malachi chapter 4 and verse 1, and it says, For behold, the day coming that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yeah, all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that the day that cometh shall burn them up, said the Lord of hosts, and that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. All right? So all you proud individuals here in Babylon the Great, all right? All you that do wickedly, you're going to be stubble. All right? You're going to be burnt up, you know, when your shot comes back to bring fire. But you're still, you're gonna, or, or you're going to be burnt up by the thermonuclear missiles during World War III, all right? You know, so first time around, you know, it was, uh, you know, it was water. The earth was destroyed, you know, with water, you know, due to the flood. But this time, you know, 
it's, it's going to be fire, all right? You know, it's going to be fire. So, you know, that's a fire that you don't want to, you don't want to deal with. You know, it's not equivalent to, you know, being burned on the stove, you know, or when you open up a stove and the heat burn your face a little bit. No, it's far worse, all right? So, uh, this is Amos chapter 9 and verse 10. And it says, All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say, The evil shall not overtake us, not overtake nor prevent us. All right? So, all the sinners of Israel, all right, you know, the two thirds are going to be destroyed in these times to come, all right? You know, it's, that's why it says, All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. You know, that's what the Lord is getting ready to bring upon this place a sword. You know, great death is getting ready to come to this place, you know. So, that brings me to Matthew chapter 24 and verse 29. All right? Because it's going to go into how, you know, the elect is going to be delivered. Yahweh Shah came for the elect. And that's it. All of Israel is not going to be delivered. You know, a lot of Israel, majority of Israel is going to have to be destroyed first. All right? Then you're going to be reborn in the kingdom through the elect. All right? So, this is Matthew chapter 24. And let's start at verse 29. And it says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Verse 30, And then shall there appear a sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and they shall, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds. All right? Clouds are symbolic you know, or synonymous to chariots, all right? So-called UFOs. Let's continue. And then they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, all right? And that also proves, unless you know that, hey, you know, the idea of a whole rapture, you know, is false. Because Christian, the Christian church likes to teach you that, you know, before the great tribulation, you know, everybody of the elect is going to be disappeared. Their clothes are going to be left on the ground. You know, then there's going to be a great tribulation. You know, then after that seven year tribulation, you know, the rest of the people are going to be delivered. That's not how it goes. You know, everybody's going to have to go through that tribulation. And then after that tribulation, right, you know, that's when you're going to see Yahweh, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. That's what you're going to see. He's going to come back and deliver the elect. All right. You know, so that proves that Christianity's idea of the rapture that's false all right that's not what the bible said let's continue verse uh 30 no, verse 31 and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other all right so yahweh bashim al shai or yahweh shai he's delivering the elect all right back in the times of uh, egypt when he was delivered out of the land of Egypt, all of Israel was saved. But this time around, the Lord is only dealing with the elect. The wicked of our people that don't want to turn back and keep, and keep the law, statutes, and commandments, hey, they're going to have to perish in these times of come, all right? It's going to either going to be through World War III, famine, you know, or when people are out here killing each other because it's going to be a lack of food, all right? Like I said, you first of all, huh? You said, you said, you said World War III. Yeah. You said you're going to World War III famine. Yeah, right, right. This uh, so in the Bible, correct me if I'm wrong, the Bible says, 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 Right, right. Oh yeah, yeah, I found this uh Revelation chapter nine and six. And it says, In those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. All right. 
Yeah. So basically, like, you know, it's gonna be so bad out here to the point where people just don't want to die. Like, hey, just take me. Just take me. Yeah, just take me. But hey, they gonna have to, they gonna have to deal with, you know, all the hell that's gonna be taking place. You know, it ain't gonna be, see that's a, that's a Christianity, doctor. Okay. Like, Christianity. They like to teach you that it's gonna be like a seven year tribulation. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? The scriptures don't talk about that. Okay. You know, the scriptures just say that it's gonna be a great time of trouble, like it was never been since the beginning of the earth. Right. You know, and then right after those times, you know, that's when who the world even called Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shot, he's gonna come back and deliver the elect. You know, then everybody that's left behind, you know, they gonna be destroyed by the number of missiles. So Yahweh Shot, he's gonna come back right during World War Three. These other nations, they're going to be fighting against each other and whatnot. You know, then they're going to realize, hey, we got a bigger problem. How is our company? Exactly. Then they're going to start trying to fight against them. You know, uh, when, you, when you read 2nd Ezra chapter uh, 13, it talks about that. You know, it talks about how these other nations, they're going to be fighting against each other, you know, and so on and so forth. Then they're going to realize, like, hey, y'all see that in the sky? You know, they're they going to realize they got a bigger problem. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to try to fight them. see what they No, it's a, it's like, see the thing, you know, a lot of people say the same thing that you said. Like, why don't you go like, you know, in front of like a big crowd? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you could do that, but it's not necessarily needed. Because whoever needs to hear the word, you know, they gonna hear it, no matter where you at. It's like for you, example. Exactly. exactly. You know what I'm saying? I'm over here, you know, in a, yeah, mind my business. But then, you know, whoever the Lord wants to hear the word, they gonna come. You know, I'm, I'm out here like every week. You know, it's been many of your brothers that walk by, you know, and then stop hearing the word, you know. So that proves that you don't necessarily need to be like in a big area. You know, we only here for the elect. And majority of the people, they're not of the elect. You know, we're not here for everybody. You know, we only here for who the Lord's want, who the Lord wants to hear the word. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, the fact that you, you know, you walk by and that's the Lord trying to tell you something. You know what I'm saying? So uh this is second Ezra chapter 13. I want to see if I can get straight to the point. Uh give me a second. Yeah. Uh, it says uh I think I want to start at verse 10. And it says, uh, But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth. Oh, let me see. Because it's been a minute since I went to this particular time. Yeah, for sure. All right, here we go. I find it. And it says, uh, Matter of fact, I'm going to just start at the beginning. All right, verse 1. And it says, It came to pass after seven days I dreamed. A dream by night. This is our forefather Andrew's talking. And it says, And lo, there arose a wind from the sea, and it, and it moved like the waves thereof. Verse 3. And I beheld, and lo, that a man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. All right, and it's talking about Yahweh Shah, who the world gave him to be called Jesus Christ. All right, everything that was under him, meaning when he come back, everything that was under him, it trembled. Because they seen him, like, oh, man, we didn't believe this time was coming, but he finally came. They gonna, people on the earth, they're going to tremble, you know. Then it says, uh, and whosoever the voice went out of his mouth, they all burned that heard his voice, like as the earth fell it, when it fell it, the fire, all right, great fire is coming to this place. It's either going to come through the way of thermal nuclear missiles, and your house shot, he's coming back with fire too, you know what I'm saying? So this place is going to be like Sodom and Gomorrah. So do you believe in, uh, Right, no, that's that's uh that's not biblical. Like you know how the way they portray, portray the movies. Yeah. You know, like uh people just going on about their day-to-day -day life. Just, yeah, and their clothes left on the ground. Yeah, yeah it's not like that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Then after that everybody that's left behind, they're gonna have to go through tribulation. And that's another thing I'm saying, they basically saying like uh after the rapture come the Lord gets his the Lord gets his people and basically they You said, I'm going to say that again. When the Lord comes, I mean, the Lord takes that the Lord's rapture, he takes the people off and things like that. And he leaves the ones here. And I think that same seven year thing that you said that it's not, it's not, it's not the biblical. Right. The seven year, okay, he comes and the Lord comes back and he just sends fire. Right. He sends fire as far as I can say, like, as far as like, he sends fire as far as waste. Yeah. Like, the rest of the world. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, uh, everybody that's, you know, that's, that he did it. So I'm not sure, uh, I'm not so like you asking like 
like what's going to happen after that. Yeah, t- yeah basically, you know, uh, after tribulation, you know, Yahweh comes back, he delivers the elect, you know, uh, the scriptures talk about how two thirds are going to perish and one third is going to be delivered. You know, the one third, this one's going to be caught up into the chariots with Yahweh you know what I'm And then after that, he's destroying, you know, this place right here, mainly Babylon the Great America. Because that's what America is. It's mystery Babylon. When you read about the Revelation. So this whole place is going to be like a wasteland. It's going to be like a desert. You know, then after that, you know, we're going to be put back in our homeland, which is Jerusalem. You know what I'm saying? It's like the second earth. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's, yeah. When, yeah, when the scriptures talk about the heavens and the new earth, it's not talking about a new heaven and a new earth. It's going to, it's going to be the same earth, but everything is going to be renewed. Because when you look around, like everything is defiled, the earth is defiled. You know, everything is going to be beautified again. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, our homeland, Jerusalem, is going to be beautified. Right now, different parts of it, you know, it looks like a wasteland. You know, it looks like a desert, but, you know, it's going to be like uh, the Garden of Eden. Exactly. You know, it's going to be fruitful. We're going to see uh, fruits, trees everywhere like that. It's, earth is going to be beautiful. Exactly. All right? That's what it's talking about when it says in new heaven and new earth. And also, when it says in new heaven and new earth, it's also talking about rulership. You know, because right now, you know, uh, those of us on the on the tribe, on the tribe right here, we're the children of Israel. You know, we're supposed to be in rulership right now, but because of our disobedience to the Lord, you know, we are put in a position where we are right now. You know, I was going to ask the question, you know, as um, this my, um, as us being, you know, chosen as God, you know, us being black and everything, right. the tendency of God and everything, but you know, I was going to know, like, bro, like, if we are those people of the Lord, why would the Lord take us through this situation? You know, he put white people on the top of everything, right? He put us on the bottom of everything. I don't understand it because how is it like the big tree as a pill? You know, it's going to be through poverty. I, 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 like, don't get me wrong, I understand poverty is a choice. I understand the way your know, living circumstances is a choice, but if yeah, we're your descendants, like, why take us through this situation? Why, why, why play it? It's like, why are you famous, murderous, and killing some things like that? They always get to get up with the people that's actually down there working and working on one thing like that. And not even that, let me get back on top, not even that, as far as like, us, me and you black brothers, you my brother and everything, we are the sentence of the Lord, we're the sentence of him. They say his they say his king is going to be great. So how 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 are we put this position when white people when the white people they actually when white people they come from us. They're not even yeah, supposed right. to be here. Yeah, that, that's what we're talking about though. We read Genesis chapter twenty-five. Esau the uh, so-called white man, he comes from Esau. If you, had, if you heard about the story of Jacob and Esau, okay. they was pretty much twin brothers, but they was different in appearance, you know, manner and everything. Yeah. You know, but Esau, he came out red and hairy. You know, when you look at so-called white man, he's not white like a piece of paper. Right. He's red because his blood th- shows through his skin, he has no melanin. Okay. You know, and when you look at him, he's very hairy. He's one of the most people, hairiest people on earth. Okay. You know, they come from the Caucasus Mountain, they're cave. Absolutely. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, and the scriptures talk about how, uh, you know, the elder, and when you read that chapter, it talks about how the elder shall serve the younger. Right. Esau, he came out first. You know, and Jacob, the progenitor of the 12 tribes of Israel right here, you know, he came out holding on to the heel of Esau, right? So that lets you know that, you know, we're supposed to be in rulership because Esau came out first. But why are we, why are we at the bottom right now? Right. It's because of our disobedience. You know, and uh, when you read Deuteronomy chapter 28, you know, when you start at verse one, all the way down to verse 14, it's a list of blessings that will come upon the children of Israel if you kept the law, statutes, and commandments, right? But then starting at verse 15, all the way down to verse 68, it talks about how if you don't keep the law, statutes, and commandments, all these curses will come upon you. And all those curses, it fit us so-called, everybody else on this chart, it fit us to a T. You know, so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native American Indians, you know, it fit us to a T. You know, the scriptures of uh, did you want me to finish the part? Yes, where, absolutely. Yeah, then I'm going to show you how, yeah. about the curses and whatnot. You know, uh, me and you talking about how they're going to try to fight against, you know, you always shout when he comes back. All right? So I believe I was in verse 4, and it says, Whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, they all burned that heard his voice, like as the earth fell it, when it filled the fire. All right, verse 5. And it says, After this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number, from the four winds of heaven to subdue the man that came out of heaven, all right? Or where it says the sea, but you know, it's really, exactly. t- yeah, it's talking about, you know, heaven and whatnot. You know, so, 
yeah, subdue, meaning to break them down. Yeah, right. that's what these, that's what the armies of, this, of the earth is going to do. You know, the so-called white man's army. That's why it's a good thing for not for us not to be in the army, because that's a that's a that's a suicide. You know, you, because you know these armies they ain't going to be able to take down. You know, the say they're not going to be able to do that. So that's, you said what? Come on now. Yeah, right, right. So uh, yeah, you know that's that's why. I, hey, I tell every single Hispanic, black Hispanic, and Native American brother, hey, don't get in that army. You know what I'm saying? Because the times that we're in right now, we see what they're in. You know what I'm saying? So don't get in the army. That's really a suicide. You know, but to continue, it says, But I beheld and lo, he graved himself in a great mountain and flew upon it. All right? You know, and now, like back in the ancient days, you know, they had to use like certain metaphors because they didn't. This is a vision that he had right? right. for the future. You know, and this great mountain that he's seen, you know, it's really like a chariot. You know, that's how big it was. Like, it's a great mountain. You know what I'm saying? And it says, but I would have, but I would have seen the region or place where out the hill was graven, I would not. So meaning like this great thing that's like a mountain, the chariot, it was so big, he couldn't see where it began or where it ended. That's how you seen the Independence Day, right? You know, Will Smith, you know, yeah, when you get a chance, you know, look up Independence Day and watch, you know, uh, the alien invasion scene. You know, everybody was just living their daily life. Next thing you know, a big so-called UFO came out of the sky. You know, and destroy this place, right? So these movies, they really be telling you what's gonna happen. The elites of this world, they know it's coming. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's how it's gonna be. You know, uh, you know, how he's gonna come back on a great chariot. Who the world ignorantly calls you a folks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what he's coming on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then it says, uh, and after this, I beheld and lo, they all which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid. And yet they durst fight. So these other nations, these armies, they are gonna be afraid when they see Yahweh Shah comes back on the big chariot. But yet the Lord is gonna have the spirit on them to still fight anyway. You know, because every single one of us, people like to say, hey, we got free will. We all just pretty much this is a Lord movie, and you know, he's causing us to do whatever he wants us to do. Right. You know, so he wants these armies to fight against them to feel to fulfill what prophecy said was gonna happen. Absolutely. All right. So it says, let's read again. It says, after this I beheld and lo, all they were gathered together to, to subdue him and were so afraid, and yet there's fight. So they're still going to fight regardless so of them being afraid. Then it says, verse 9, and lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his, his hand, nor held a sword, nor any instrument of war. Verse 10, but only I saw that he sent out of his mouth, and it has been a blast of fire out of his lips, flaming breath. And out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. All right, verse eleven. And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude which were prepared to fight, and burned them up every one. So upon a sudden, of an innumerable multitude, nothing was perceived, but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. So when Andrew seen this vision, he was afraid. Like, Dad, this was going to happen. You know, so as we just seen, you know, these armies, you know, armies of America, Saudi Arabia, Russia, they all gonna be fighting against each other. You know, World War Three, the war to end all wars. You know, but during that time, Yahweh Shai is gonna come back. You know, and he's going to come back to destroy. Them. And they gonna try to fight against them, but as we just read, he's gonna burn them up with fire. So that's that's what's gonna happen. You know, after the tribulation, Yahweh Shai come back, deliver the elect. The army's gonna try to fight against them. He's gonna destroy them. All right. Ultimately, all America is going to be destroyed. It's going to be a wasteland. You know, that's why the scriptures say, you know, it's going to be like Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, we know what happened. You heard Sodom and Gomorrah before? Yeah, please, 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 please. All right, Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, it was destroyed. You know, uh, Lot, you know, Lot, you know, you know what the scripture would say it should be as the days of Lot yeah. and whatnot. That's how it's going to be. You know, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah is notorious for, you know, I got to say it in a certain way because it's, it's for YouTube. Yeah, yeah, listen you know, to yeah. Sodom and Gomorrah, they was pretty much alphabet people. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Yeah, they promoted that heavy. You know, that's what Sodom and Gomorrah is notorious for. You know, men on men, women on women, so on and so right. forth. You know, and the Lord, he ultimately destroyed that whole land. But he saved life and his family out of that. All right? So that's how it's going to be this time around. You know, we pretty much the elect. We hope that we will be elected. We pretty much playing the position of life. You know, the, the Lord, he's going to deliver the elect. And he's going to destroy everybody else. All right? So that's why it says... You know, Babylon is going to be like Sodom and Gomorrah. This place is going to be a wasteland. Sorry, Babylon. I mean, it was a part of, you know, and I ain't trying to interrupt you with that. Oh, sorry, really? Uh, but then they just said, uh, as far as, you know, like, the, uh, the outside world, you know, the, 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 the
See, the thing with that, you know, because you have a lot of brothers going about it wrong, right, you know, because right. you ain't just supposed to just be, you know, just hitting a woman, leave, you know, go to the next. You know, you're supposed, if you don't have a mother and have another wife, the scripture say that you got to take care of her. You know what I'm saying? You got to fool, raiment, and the duties of marriage. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you have a lot of men just hit and quit that's going on. So, as far as like, so like, and, and polygamy, like, people like, as far as like, sister wives, right? Things like that. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and my, my point on like, polygamy and uh, polygamy and things like that, I feel like polygamy is more along the lines of like, don't get me wrong, sex, I feel like that's a bonus. Yeah, it is what it is, you know, and that's what it comes with, you know, right. you know. But I feel like it comes with brotherhood, I mean, it comes with sisterhood, it comes with, you know, it takes, it takes a village to raise children. Yeah, it, it comes is. with uh, multiple income. It's not just about a physical aspect of it. Right. It's about, it's about it's about the mental, mental, spiritual, emotional uh, connection. That's how I feel as far as uh, polygamy goes. Yeah, not right. just you know the sex. Right. Well, like, yeah, yeah, that would be for that. But now you know I also learned that now also uh, let me get let me get you back on top. Hey, no, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, I also learned that you know as far as like sister wives and things like that. They're not, they're not you know, having sex with each other. Not just things of that. Yeah, you know, right. Exactly. Each other. That's what I feel like. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so sister wise, you want to touch that with them in mind, but they're that they're they're like they're kidding, they're headed their house with their things in their hand. Right. So yeah. I, yeah, it's just but you just find it number clarifying. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
So the Arts of Burn, which is kind of like the two people who are not there. Right. And they decide to never be talking. And step two is not, like, there's no scene against them. Right. It's just when you step outside of them two people. Right. You go live with somebody else, unless it's polygamy. Right, yeah, right, right. I mean, if a man lay, decides he want to lay with another woman yeah. outside of the woman that he already got or the women that he already got, he's not going off. You know, he just has to do his duty of marriage. Right. You know what I'm saying? But if a woman, on the other hand, she has a husband and she just she goes and lay with another man, that's adultery. And we go into the ancient days, you know, uh, the penalty for adultery was both the man that committed adultery and the woman that committed adultery. They would get stoned to death. Right. You know, so, you know, in the society, they just, they make it seem like all that stuff cool you get away with. But one thing, bro, you know, as far as like, you know, how I like to go, it's like, like, judge now, judge, you know, uh, and that's just how, like, my nigga always go, I appreciate you, man. No, it's all good, it's all good. Hey, you got a YouTube? Yeah, no, I got a YouTube, yeah, I can't subscribe and follow you. Yeah, yeah, for sure, because I know I upload videos all throughout the day. Yeah, yeah, I can't uh, subscribe and follow you. Yeah, for sure. And I, uh, I didn't get to get to the Deuteronomy chapter 28, but I do got a whole video. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So you can watch it. What's your name on us, brother? Uh, YouTube? Yeah, bro, whatever. The way he do. Uh, I don't know, that's the way I'm dying. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure, too. The real Hebrew dying. Yeah, for sure. And if you do decide to get back on Instagram or social media, same name, same, same way. All right, you know, I ain't no problem. All right, too, man. All right, so I believe we was at, uh, we left off at, I think it was Matthew. Yeah, Matthew chapter 29. All right, I believe we left off at Matthew chapter 29. 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 Matthew chapter 31, I believe, all right? And it says, and he shall send his angels with the great sound of the trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds of the heaven, even to the other, all right? So that's what the Yahushua only coming back for. He's only coming back for the elect, all right? You know, like I said, like I told this brother, you know, uh, you know, during the times of uh, ancient Egypt, all of Israel was delivered out of Egypt, you know, but during this time around, you know, Yahushua, he's only coming for, the elect, the one third, two thirds of our people are gonna perish, all right? You know, you know that's why, uh, yeah, two thirds of our people are gonna perish. That's why the scripture said there's gonna be more that perish than those saved, all right? Let's continue. Verse um, 32, now learn a parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, you know that the summer is not. Verse 33, so like you, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the door. So when you see all these things taking place, you know, these plagues, you know, wars and rumors of wars, pestilences, you know, earthquakes, hey, know that the time is not. You know, know that, you know, Yahweh Bashem is getting ready to destroy this place, all right? You know, know that Yahweh Shah is getting ready to come back with the angels and to destroy this place. Verse 34, verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass. So all things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall not pass away, but my words, you know, it's a lot of it says heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away, all right? You know, so this place, Babylon the Great specifically, you know, it's gonna pass away, it's gonna be destroyed, but the Lord's words is not gonna pass away. Verse 36, for on that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. Verse 37, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Verse 38, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah 
entered into the ark. Verse 39, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be, all right? So it's gonna be the same ways in the day of Noah. You know, people was doing whatever the hell they wanna do, you know, living a life, and then suddenly the flood came, all right? So it's gonna be the same way, you know, people living their life, doing whatever the hell they want. You know, then suddenly all hell's gonna break loose, all right? Suddenly your house shot's gonna come back, all right? You know, then, you know, doors of mercy is closed, all right? You gotta get judged, all right? So, I wanna get Luke chapter 21, all right? And we're gonna start at verse 38. And it says, take heed to yourselves, least at any time your hearts be overcharged with sure fitting and drunkenness and curse of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares, all right? So pay attention, you know, make sure that you're not caught up in the things of this world. Because if you, if you are, you know, it's gonna catch you uh, as it, uh, what it say? You know, that day is gonna catch you unawares, you know, as a thief in the night. You know, it's gonna come upon you like it did in the days of Noah, you know? So that's why it's important not to be caring, you know, about what the hell this place has to offer. You know, turn back to your heart about Shemel Shai and repent, all right? Uh, verse 35, for as a snare shall it come upon all them to dwell on the face of the earth, all right? That's how the day of the Lord is gonna come. It's gonna come upon people as a snare out of nowhere, you know, at a time that you least expect it. That's why in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I'm gonna get that, you know, it says that, you know, when people say it's peace and safety, then destruction will come, all right? Verse 36, watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man, all right? So you're supposed to be praying, you know, that you'll be able, that you'll be worthy to escape these things, all right? Because great judgment, Jacob's trouble is on the way, all right? You know, things may seem cool right now, but hey, you know, it's gonna change very quick, you know? And we clearly see that this time is coming, you know, because it's gonna come, you know, when the dollar collapse, you know, and people are not able to buy things anymore. Hyperinflation, so on and so forth. You know, these times are at the door, you know? So I'm gonna get First Thessalonians right quick. First Thessalonians chapter five, and I'm gonna close this lesson out, all right? So this is First Thessalonians chapter five and verse one. And it says, but of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Verse two, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse three. For, your, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape, all right? You know, and that's how the play is gonna come upon this place, all right? You know, as a woman in travail, you know, getting ready to have her, her baby, all right? We read about that earlier, you know? So it's gonna come at a time that you least suspect it when you say peace and safety, all right? You know, let's continue, verse four. But ye brethren are not in darkness that that they shall overtake you as a thief. Why right? you brothers that sincerely in his truth? You know, you brothers and you sisters that sincerely in his truth, all right? You know, that paying attention to what's going on, that day is not gonna catch you as a thief because you're measuring the times diligently as second Ezra chapter nine says, all right? You know, let's continue. Verse uh, five, ye are, ye are all children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Verse 6, and it says, Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober, all right? Let us not sleep like others are being like others are doing right now. Majority of the people are asleep, spiritually asleep. They don't know what's going on, nor do they even care what's going on, all right? They're spiritually asleep, they're spiritually dead, you know? So, and the scripture says, let us watch and be sober. I mean, be alert, pay attention to what's going on, all right? Because if you're not, that day is gonna catch you as a thief. You know, when you say it's peace and safety, you know, destruction is gonna come upon you as a woman in travail, you know? So, you know, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying to your brothers and your sisters out there. Repent, turn back to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai because destruction is on the horizon, all right? So with that being said, I wanna give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rakak Wadash for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. Dub out to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone and Shalom to you brothers that's out there pushing this truth and sincerity. Shalom.